Hello and welcome back to Byron's Adventures and we're going to be heading on over to Chernopsis Castle right here. Bear in mind that we are very close by to Phikeon once again as well because of course we did just capture that in the previous episode. So we're going to get, uh, actually someone recommended going for trebuchets or trebuckets as I like to call them and the correct name for them. And uh, yes, um, <laughs> it would probably be a good idea for me to actually switch over to using trebuchets. But the thing is, is that generally when I use them, they just take so long to build. And I don't know whether that's just my impatience. It is. But the point is, is that generally I feel like using onagers is just going to make everything so much quicker. But uh, I don't know. I don't know. Let, let's actually just take a look. So the build cost is 24. Oh, wow. Okay. Trebuchets literally only cost four more in terms of production cost, which I got to say is actually kind of amazing. So I'm thinking we're probably going to switch to trebuchets in the future. Let's just try out um, Onagas for this one siege, and then we'll switch to trebuchets in the future in uh, in regards to the other... Oh, oh, oh hello. Yes, in regards to the other castle that is just in the distance over there, because we're going to need to do something with that. Anyway, Chason wants to give us huge amounts of money. Does he not want to give me 2.16 uh, million? He doesn't? Well, that's very disappointing. Because I feel like I should really, you know, I'm just going to take 327,000. Even though personally, I feel like he should be giving me much more than this. Because he has it. <laughs> he has it, but oh well, I think that's fine. You know, it's good to, to gain some money at least. And uh, this guy's going to probably come out of the gate doing a lot of damage to us in the future. So I'm not a big fan of letting him go for such a cheap price. But we'll see. We'll see how it goes. All right. So, Onagas, go. I choose you, Onagas. Are you going to level up and uh, indeed evolve into some Trebuckets? I hope they do. I hope they do. All right. So, it's going to take a bit of time for us to actually, you know, get these walls down and everything like that. But it is just a castle, so it shouldn't be too long. All right. Here we go. Going into Chernopsis Castle, into the actual siege. We've taken down both walls, and I actually did replace two of my Onagas that were destroyed with Trebuckets, and I actually thought they did pretty well. They actually have a significant amount more HP, or at least that's how it seems. I should really take a look at their HP when we... Ow. Are you serious? Who actually shot me? Are you serious right now? Look at this. Who actually shot me? Ah, that guy. Over there? Oh, what a sneaky individual. Look at that. What a beast. Oh, you're dead now. That's what you get. That is what you get for being such a sneaky, sneaky scoundrel right there. All right. Well, I'm going to be getting ready to go in here with Byron with his wonderful glaive. And we will be teaching the opponent a thing or two about how to use pole arms. Yes, that's what we'll do. Hello. Oh, well, <laughs> oh, that was funny. Did you see that? That guy literally just had like a tumble or something like that. That was, that was kind of interesting. Anyway, these guys are just completely ignoring me, which I'm not entirely sure why they would do that, but they are, which is pretty good for me. And as you can see, we're just able to cut swathes through the opponent, just absolutely, literally doing so much damage. I am probably going to get shot multiple times while I'm doing this, though. Ah, get him! Ah, unfortunately he's going to get away here, I think. And, ah, there we go, we got him in the leg. That was not exactly great, was it? Not exactly great. Maybe we can get that guy. No. Oh, well, yeah. See, you now that's the thing. Projectiles in Battlelord are very, very different from how they react in Warband. Because in Warband, they're more like... Mm, I don't want to say lasers, but they're much faster through the air. At least I, I think that that's, uh, that's the main change um, that you can see between the two games. Especially when it comes to ranged combat. Uh, because I've always kind of felt hey, you know what, the, 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 this bow is really, really powerful, you know, in Warband. And then when you're playing in Bannerlord, it's, it's a little bit different, you know. You kind of have um, a situation where your 
shooting at someone and they're moving from left to right or right to left or something and, and they're moving horizontally from you basically and you kind of think oh okay yeah i'm definitely going to hit this guy and then all of a sudden no you don't you don't hit him and it's just crazy so yeah that's the kind of thing that you're going to have to deal with with a banner lord's ranged combat now don't get me wrong i actually really like the ranged combat in banner lord i think it is very cool once you get used to it once you get used to it you're going to have a much much easier time ah hello there Chinopsis is being attacked by this guy oh okay so we don't i don't think we need to worry about him do we do we really need to worry about him fighting on is actually fine as you can see we're getting some defenders over there seems like most of our other castles are doing okay as well now there is ah i think this was actually taken what was it or they defected or something like that i think the clan themselves the clan naretzes actually did defect away from the western empire and as a result that's exactly why uh, varagos castle is no longer there um under, under their ownership basically because I was thinking to myself, oh, okay, I'm going to go to Chinopsis Castle and then I'll go to Varagos Castle and see if I can take that. So it seems like they have indeed defected. So that's interesting because that means that I can now focus on other things and I don't need to worry so much. So let me actually just take a quick look at Byron's traits here because I think I might have gained... Yep, there we go. We gained another, another trait point in leadership. Let's have a look. Militia has a 20% chance to spawn with more experienced troops or Garrison gains 20% more experience i think i'm going to go for citizen militia that seems like a, a more fun thing for me to do let's have a look at what else we go oh yeah okay 20 percent less influence needed to call parties to army i guess that's what i'm going to go for eventually and then we have 10 percent more effective buildings and structures followed by 20 percent faster notable recruit replenishment Ooh, that sounds pretty fun hmm yeah well uh, I think it was pretty good. Anyway, um, a number of people have been really, really helpful in the comments, and someone actually suggested that I get my children married. Now, I'd love to be able to do that. Now, here's the thing. I've tried to kind of find out how, to be honest, because here's the thing. I, of course, do have the ability to... Um, I mean, that's the thing. I have a lot of children that are ready to marry as soon as possible basically you know i mean we have um barney and yara and and all that stuff that are very very much ready to go in in terms of marrying someone and i don't know how that is supposed to work i i know that sounds kind of weird but I don't know how to really get them involved with someone so for example as you can see right here barnabas is 31 and we have Yara, who is 34. So she's actually, um, I, I, as far as I'm aware, um, she might be, a, I'm not entirely sure if she's too old to actually um, have children. I don't know whether the cutoff is 35 or 45 in the game. I think it's 45, actually. So she could still, she could still do something right there. Bruce is 27. So he's, he's looking pretty good right there. Pelosaur is, of course, 18, <laughs> which is hilarious. Yana's 23. So, I mean, there's still time to get married with any of my children right here. So even if both myself, Byron, and Yana, even if both of them perish somehow, then we will have the opportunity to get them married. But that's the thing. I don't know how to get them married before I have control of their their characters specifically i know there is a mod out there that can actually give you control of your clan members independently which i uh, i have heard about from some people and uh, as far as i'm aware it's pretty cool because you can basically change who you're controlling at any time which i think is a really really nice functionality but uh, yeah i don't know whether i really want to do that and potentially have another you know, save game corruption and things like that. I just want to be very careful with a save game as old as Byron's at this point because it's been a while, you know. It's been a while since we've started this this series and I am, well, Byron is very old at this point. I, I actually don't know how old he is. Let's have a look. He's actually 70 and I think people, I'm not entirely sure when they start dying. That's the thing. 
So we're going to have to see what happens with that. But anyway, let's uh, let's go over here and take this castle. And uh, as I said before, we're going to try out the trebuchet tactic. And uh, the other thing that people have been extremely helpful with in the comments, I'm not entirely sure whether it was on this series or another series, but the point is, is that being able to take food and indeed buy food extremely quickly. I was unaware that right shift was being used as any kind of button whatsoever, because usually it's left shift only for these kinds of things in uh, Warband and indeed in, in Bannerlord as well. You're able to, you know, take things in groups of five. However, if you hold right shift and then click on something, I don't know whether it works for units as well or whether it just works for food. But I did it at the trade screen at uh, Fikeon and I was able to buy all 235 stacks of grain instantly. And I got to say, I very much appreciate that tip. So thank you very much for that. It is a lifesaver. It just saves so much time. It really does. And uh, hopefully I'll be able to actually show it to you, really, because, of course, uh, I, I think you probably you probably already know about it, right? Well, if you don't know about it, then it's obviously just, you know, holding right, right shift and uh, then just going on from there. But it's so, so useful and it really does make your inventory management just that much quicker. And that's exactly what you want in these kinds of situations. Uh, it seems like Baron wants to speak to us. What can you offer for your freedom, fellow? Ah, uh, you can offer 12,000. Well, that's... Do you... What? <laughs> he... He... What? He's not... He, is he, he's not willing to... He's not willing to offer anything? Or, no, he's not willing to offer anything whatsoever. What if I give him money? No, if I give him money, no, he, he doesn't want this. He just literally wants me to do it for free. Is that is that true? Or was it just a bug? No, he wants me to do it for free, not even for one dinar. That is actually hilarious. Okay, I will do it because he's uh, he's got the courage to come to me and basically say, hey, can you do this for free? I'm a generous fellow. I don't mind. You know, I'm, I'm happy to <laughs> uh, give him a little bit of a uh, little bit of a break, I guess. Uh, I think the Southern Empire is in a pretty bad situation as it is right now. So it's not really something that I particularly care about in a big way. Whoa, Monchuk's running around with a massive... Okay, wow, they're, they're besieging Sirenea at the moment. Oh, it seems like the Southern Empire is actually still around. Oh, that's interesting. I think they have just taken something from the Western Empire, actually. They have just taken Sirenea, as far as I'm aware. Yeah, that might actually be the case, but there's 500 and 500 plus defenders there, so that's pretty, that's pretty impressive. Okay, so let's place out all of our trebuckets. And we will be throwing the kitchen sink at them in just a second. Oh, yes. Okay, so, yeah, bear in mind that, um, as far as I'm aware, Onigas have about 1,400 or 1,500 HP, and Trebuckets have 3,200, which is insane. It, they are so incredibly hard to kill. But bear in mind that the Trebuckets are going to take longer to destroy enemy siege equipment. So you can see here, this ballista has been firing at us for a pretty significant amount of time, and the Trebucket is quite a bit more inaccurate than an Onager might be, so that might be a reason why you might not want to use Trebuckets, but as you can no doubt tell, they seem to be working pretty nicely, you know, they seem to be going quite well there. And this guy wants me to give him away for free as well. Yes, he certainly does. No? Oh, okay. Yeah, free. Okay, well, we'll gain some we'll gain some charm, I guess, which is pretty good. Oh, it seems like Ah, Phaedon. Right. Yes, I'm not a not a big fan of this guy. So I'm actually gonna continue to keep him with me for the moment. And uh, then we're gonna just see if he uh, if he comes to me again. If he comes to me again, then I might decide to just let him go. But I, I don't really want to let him go and then have him turn around and attack us or something like that. So we'll see what happens. 
How much damage are we actually doing to the wolves? Seems like we're doing about 3,000 per hit or 2,000 per hit or something like that. I think that's pretty good. So I'm kind of happy with that. Seems like the Western Empire literally just have the wolf skins working for them at the moment. And that is literally it. I think that is literally all they have left, which is kind of impressive. All right, there you go. We've taken down their walls and we've taken down all of their siege equipment and everything. So we can now head on in. It's snowing. It's cold. And we're probably going to get shot in the face very, very soon. So <laughs> let's see if we can maybe get a couple more kills this time around. We actually got some pretty decent kills last time where we were able to, you know, shoot a couple of people. And, of course, my wonderful, wonderful polearm attacks as well. All right. Hello there. There we go. In the abdomen. That is not really where I want to hit people. That is for sure. I would like to hit them in the, in the, well, in the head as much as possible. You know, it reduces suffering to them. And it also means that uh, it's much, uh, much quicker for us to, to get the kills and to use less ammunition. Shoulder. Not too bad. Oh, nice. Nice hit right there. Yes, headshot. Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> I'm so sorry, one of my own men. Very good. I shot him in the ankle. Must have been Achilles or something. Okay, so we're going to take the man down. Oh, yeah. oh, 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 yes, I'm being interrupted here because I'm actually being shot dramatically by huge amounts of archers. That is not exactly nice of them, but we'll be fine. We'll be fine. Just don't get shot in the face, Byron. That's all I ask. That is all I ask. Do not get shot in the face. Nice damage. Okay, look at that. Ah, oh, no, there's so many of them running away. Yes. Get him. Ah. Oh, yeah, it's kind of it's kind of unfortunate when your character has such a little amount of athletic skill. It really makes a huge difference to your movement speed. I really uh, should have spec'd a little bit into it. Just a little, you know. I don't need to have 200 in it or anything like that. But having maybe 100 or so would probably make all the difference in uh, my movement speed. And uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're having a whole bunch being routed right now, which is absolutely fine with me. And there you go, 19 right now. Obviously, it's not going to be a super hardcore amount or anything like that that we're gaining, but it's good enough, good enough for me. All right, so it's about time that we actually reach 175 engineering. We've been doing so many sieges that really, uh, it's really about time, isn't it? Anyway, there you go. Heavier siege engines, which increases our damage against other siege engines by 20%. And, whoa, wall breaker is so cool. We're, we're hopefully going to be able to get that relatively soon. Increases damage to walls during sieges. Less morale loss during sieges. Building development speed. Wow, times... 1.5 and then default town projects are 60% more effective. All of these really high tier traits are super fun. And I'm actually going to head back to Karenia because apparently this guy is deciding to besiege it, which I do not like one bit. I was actually hoping that I would be able to take Onira relatively quickly. Wow, this guy literally did not even run away. I'm going to just do an auto resolve really fast against him because. I don't really want to go in against uh, such a small party. I, I feel like it's just a waste of time, to be honest. But there you go. He has been defeated. Let's take a whole bunch of loot. And um, I, I don't know whether you could see, but I actually have 22 food. What shall we say? 22 days remaining. And personally, I kind of want to... What, 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 what's, it, what's actually going on here? Yeah, sure, just go free, sir. Just go free. I have literally released Baranor so many times now. I don't exactly know what's going on because I am being told that Baranor is still needing to be released. And I say, okay, let's do a little bit of bartering. And then I just, you know, reset the, the trade. You know, put him on the one side. And then I, I gift him, basically, back to his faction. And then a couple of days later, he's like, uh, would you mind releasing me? You yeah, know, he does it again and again. Not entirely sure why, but anyway... I was hopeful that what I would be able to do is take Onira before I run out of food, because as you can no doubt see, my army is, uh, well, only having 206 total food for us. 
and we only have nine days remaining until we run out of food, and I don't know whether this is going to be enough for Onira's siege, which is the main problem here. So I will be trying this, but I I don't think this is going to be enough, actually. I really don't think this is going to be enough, because what's going to happen is after a couple of days, we are just not going to have enough. I don't think we will. Uh, Karenia might come under siege again, but hopefully not. But we'll see. Joron is also someone that has constantly said hi to me. So let's have a look and see how much... Oh, wow. He's actually willing to give me 1.46 million. So I will be happy to accept that. Thank you very much. Someone finally willing to pay a little bit extra for being released. Because let's face it, the other guys weren't even willing to give one dinar. So there you go. Anyway, Varagos has been besieged by Regea, apparently. So that's good to know. And we're going to just continue building our Trabuckets. And uh, we'll see how fast the walls of 100,000 HP diminish in the face of huge amounts of Trabuckets. And, uh, okay, so let's see. Does this guy... No, see, look at that. And then I gift him. And then he's going to be like, yeah, of course I agree. And then in a few days, he's going to come back and he's going to be like, can you release me, please? It's the same kind of thing. I don't know why. All right, here we go. We've got all our Trabuckets up and running. And we're going to see how fast it is for the walls of 100,000 HP to be destroyed. And bear in mind, we don't have the wall breaker trait or anything like that. But we do have that new trait that basically improves the amount of damage that we deal to enemy siege engines. Which i got to say, I think is really cool because... Being able to destroy catapults that much faster, especially catapults in this case, because I, I feel like catapults actually do a lot of damage to tre trebuchets, so it's a really good idea to have that um, have that trait. Anyway, twenty thousand. He's willing to give me all of the money, so I will be taking that. And uh, actually, all these guys, I should probably try and persuade them. Really, I should probably try and persuade them to join us because. Uh, that's the thing. I've done that before, and it hasn't really worked out. I've done that in the Pelosaur series, where I was able to convince a vassal to join us. And then, hilariously enough, this is what happened. I spoke to him, I convinced him, against all odds, that he should join us. And then, all of a sudden, he decides, one, not not even one minute later, basically basically almost one minute later, he goes, oh, okay, you've just given me this castle. I'm going to defect back to my original faction and take the castle with, with me. And that's exactly what he did. Pretty crazy, right? Hopefully that's not going to happen to Byron. All right, so we have Oros here who wants to be let go. And as you can see, he is literally not willing to... He's not willing to give us anything. And he's got three... 0.49 million dinars. So I'm actually going to say no to this guy, literally just because of that. And here's Vadon again, as I said to you beforehand. So I'm actually just going to let him go because I don't see a point in keeping him, to be honest. If because he doesn't have any money, and he's not going to give me any money, so it might might not make any sense. But hopefully someone else might talk to me about Oros, and then we might be able to get some extra cash from from there but uh anyway this is a daytime siege we've got no snow or anything like that to deal with so we should be we should be pretty good you know we should be pretty good so let's make our way over here where are the uh where are the ah there we go there's one of the wall breaches let's try and uh let's try and get over there shoot them ah yeah that didn't really go that didn't really go too well it would have been amazing if we'd actually hit there but you know that's just not how it goes for Byron most of the time. I am being shot from somewhere. Okay, let's be a little bit careful here too, because bear in mind that uh, I do have quite a few pretty good archers. <laughs> let's just say that. And again, I'm looking down and pressing F. I know, I know I just need to press Z and then it will all work out very nicely. Ah. What, can I not get up here? Are you serious? There we go. Nice headshot. Another nice headshot. Come on now. More headshots, please. Okay, well, I'm just, I'm just going to jump in here. Just going to jump in, do as much damage as possible. They're going to run very, very fast anyway. I mean, they're going to run pretty quickly. 
because just really, I mean, Byron comes... Am I really only doing two damage? I'm, I'm doing a pretty decent amount of damage to the first couple of units to hit, but obviously after that, it's not really working out too well, so yeah, we're just going to have to be a bit careful here. Take him down. Yes. Get those Imperial crossbowmen dead. There we go. All right. And just, just, you see that? You see how quick that was? Look at that. That's pretty crazy. Byron actually has 19 kills. I can't believe it. Very nice indeed. And uh, maybe we can get a couple more kills. Oh, nice, nice chest hit. Very good. Usually I'm not able to, uh, not able to really get those hits that often. Considering they, uh, they will have shields equipped. And that really does make a huge difference. Take him down. What? Okay. Apparently I'm not going to take him down because apparently he is an absolute beast who's able to survive against long glaive attacks by a pretty significant amount. But there you go. Anyway, that is indeed a victory for us. There's only 18 units remaining and counting. And uh, that is indeed Onira. And uh, I'm actually kind of surprised that the Western Empire have not ransomed any of their units because I would have expected them to do so relatively quickly. Because if they don't get back onto the fields of battle relatively soon, they won't have a faction left. Which is pretty crazy. Anyway, ah. I see. Yes. Okay. So now we have a bit of an issue here. We have the empires declaring war against us. And I am starving, so let's actually go in here. And I'll show you this... Uh... Oh. <laughs> uh, I was hopeful that they would have some food here, but no, they do not. So that is not going to work out too well for us. But I will just be selling everything that I have available here. Gaining 42,000 from that. Really wish I had some food in this particular... Um, in this particular town. But this is now a bit of a problem. Let's actually just take a quick look here. Ah, no, actually, I don't have any problem with this whatsoever. I am pretty happy with fighting against the Southern Empire. I don't think they're going to be too difficult for us to beat. But I am going to have to disband my army for the moment. Because if I disband my army here, we will then have the opportunity to... Uh... There you go. Army disbanded. And uh, then we will have an opportunity to replenish our food stores. And that's the main problem here. I don't exactly know what I'm supposed to do at this point. Um, we could fight some people. These guys want to fight. Do you want to fight? Are you, are, you so, are you sure? No? You're running. So apparently you don't want to fight me. Even though you kind of did. Uh, Onero is going to get besieged very, very fast. So I'm not a big fan of chasing after this guy super, super much. But I was kind of hoping that he might have some food on him. <laughs> Hilariously enough, he's probably not going to have anything. Oh, he does have a couple. He does have a couple of... He's got one day's worth of food, which is obviously not very good. And Sirenea is actually here. Onira has been besieged, which is to be expected, but that is not a big deal. I will be... Oh, Pelasora, yes! Look at that, Pelasora defeated him and has now taken him prisoner. What a beast she is. Good work. Wow, that was, that was very nice indeed. And look at this now. Now, I'm holding right shift, okay? I'm holding right shift and boom, 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 boom. Look at that. Done. Super, super fast. Very efficient. Thank you so much for telling me about that because I would never have thought to use right shift ever. But uh, there you go. That's really, really great. Anyway, I will be uh, continuing my war against the Empire, of course. And bear in mind that we do still have this quest, hilariously enough. And uh, yeah, look at that. There's actually an alliance against us. And we have to eliminate the Northern, Western, and Southern Empires. I'm actually kind of surprised that they are not already eliminated, because if you take a look at... Actually, this is not the screen that we want to go to. We want to go to the Diplomacy screen. If you take a look at their strength, you can see their strength is... I mean, I don't know why the Southern Empire has so much strength. I personally feel like they shouldn't really have that much. But yeah, anyway, the Western and the Northern Empires are pretty much done, in my opinion. And the Southern Empire, I think we will 
probably have a pretty easy time against them, but it really depends on how large Regea's army actually turns out to be. But anyway, that will be it for this episode. I thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Thank you.